Hi, today I want to give a little introduction to React Native. It's a, a framework that if you haven't heard of it or if you haven't been using React, React is a JavaScript library that acts as the view layer in any kind of MVC setup. So you don't even need to use an entire framework. Um, and people have been building apps, rich client apps on JavaScript uh, with React. Uh, in JavaScript, but they've also built building something called an isomorphic app, um, which allows you to pre-render everything on the server because React is just the view layer and it can actually run in the browser with JavaScript um, engines and it can run on the server. And so React Native is actually a really interesting approach that uh, lets you use JavaScript and a bunch of features in ES5, ES6, and ES7 to write native apps. Right now they only support iOS. Uh, but Android support is coming soon. And what I wanted to show you today was a couple of things. So just to start off, let's, you know, we, I wanted to show you what, what it is. It's, it's basically a, a framework for building native apps, use, native apps using React. And right now you can only do Apple um, and iOS apps, but the workflow is really compelling, especially if you're a web developer. It uh, feels really natural. And one of the things I found hard was to get into development um, of iOS applications, I needed to learn either Objective-C or Swift. And I found that a real large barrier to entry. I, I just cannot wrap my head around Objective-C. And so one of the nice things about React Native is you can write in JavaScript. And so one of the first questions people have uh, is, okay, so how does this actually work? Um, and I think the best place to go here is the docs, which showcase um, the JavaScript runtime and what's actually happening under the hood. So if we look here, we can see that um, when you're using React Native, you're going to be running your JavaScript code in two environments. Uh, and when you're running in the simulator and on the actual device, you're going to use JavaScript Core, which is the JavaScript engine that powers Safari and web views. Um, and then when you're debugging, it's actually going to run that JavaScript in Chrome's V8 engine uh, and then uh, communicate with Objective-C via WebSockets. And once we build the app uh, and take a look, uh, you'll see kind of how this works and, and why it's interesting. Um, but one thing to note, the JavaScript core engine doesn't have writable executable memory in iOS apps, so it doesn't run with uh, just-in-time compiling, so it doesn't have that super fast uh, JavaScript engine. Um, so uh, the, the other thing is that a lot of the components, the UI components, um, you can see here there's a list on the left, like the built-in ones, image list view. We'll take a look at just image list view and text today in the app that we're going to build. But a lot of the components get native-like performance because of the way that um, React implements and because of the algorithms within um, React Virtual DOM uh, algorithm. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. If you remember, I did a, a screencast a while ago called Practical Ang Angular JS that was not narrated. Um, this is the app that we ended up building for that, which I, I did at CodeMash, which is a Hearthstone deck browser. And it was written in Angular JS. I didn't actually write it in, in React. But I thought it would be cool to uh, take some of this idea. And basically, you can just kind of filter by the classes. There's some animations. You can page through your your deck list. I can go down here and filter by only like the four mana cards, etc. Um, and I can go switch to classes. I can click on a card to get a detailed view. I thought it would be cool to build something like this and just take a look at the introductory area um, of React Native and see where we could go. So that's as much as I want to show you of the Hearthstone deck builder. And if you want to grab the source for this, it's on my GitHub under Practical Angular JS. So let's take a look at what we need to get started with React. We need, if we go back to here, getting started, we need some dependencies. We need Node.js installed, you'll need that. Um, you'll need Watchmen, which is a Facebook provided dependency that you can install with Homebrew. Uh, and they recommend using that as a file watching uh, support system. It's a little bit more robust than some of the default um, file watching utilities that are used in either Node um, or things like Grunt or Gulp. Uh, Flow is optional, you don't need that. So I'm not gonna install that. And I've got this stuff already installed. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and grab that stuff, if you're following along, then make sure you grab that from the quick start guide. So then what you'll need is a couple of command line dependencies, and I've already done this, um, npm install-g for global React Native CLI, uh, which is the command line interface. And once you do that, you'll get uh, a couple of options. One is React Native start, and the other is init, and you can actually generate a project. So let's generate a project really quickly. I'm just going to close out of this. Uh, so let's go, I'm in my code directory, I'm make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So let's do React Native and in it, and we're going to call it uh, Hearth HS, HS Browser, Hearthstone Browser. So it's going to have a little bit of a, 
a time here, it's going to generate some things, install some dependencies with Node and NPM, pull in the React Native project. You can see all the dependencies here. Uh, and then we've actually got a, um, a fully functional app that we can open in Xcode. You can see the, the instruction at the bottom. So I'm going to open that. Uh, I'm going to go to HS Browser. And I'm just going to open it in Sublime so that we can take a look at the, the structure. You can see here there's my Xcode project um, and the iOS folder, and then a Node Modules folder with React Native, which is the only dependency right now. I can see if I open this package JSON, there's React Native. So let's open up Xcode and open this guy up. And I'm going to open, and I'm going to go back a couple directories here. So I think I'm in the wrong spot. Uh, there we go, HS Browser. And so now I've got that thing open in Xcode, and I can look at HS Browser. And I'm not super familiar with building iOS applications. I've kind of only poked around it on this stuff. And Xcode is actually really intimidating to me. So one of the things that I found compelling about React Native and what you'll see is you can use whatever editor you want. So whether you're using Vim or um, Emacs or Sublime Text. Uh, and then the other cool thing is that the React guys are coming out with an IDE called Nuclide, I think. And it's as supposed to have a tighter integration um, with React Native. And I don't think that that is released yet. I think there's a private uh, preview that's out yet. So for this screencast, I'm going to be using Sublime, um, not editing in Xcode. So to get this running, just open up the project that we generated with React Native dash uh, in it and hit play. And you'll see a couple things happen. One, uh, it's going to pop open a window that's running Node in the background. And then it's going to pop open the simulator. And it's got my Hearthstone browser running. And you can see there's a, a little view here. Um, I'm actually going to shrink this down just a tiny bit. There we go, 50%, so we can see. So there's a few pieces that are working behind the scenes here. One, uh, like I mentioned before, React is got a packager running that's using Watchmen and Node to recompile assets on the fly. Uh, and it's doing that, and then it's communicating to Xcode via WebSockets. So one of the really cool things about it is if we go into here, and let me see if I can make this like that, open up index, and I'm just going to shrink the sidebar here. So this is the standard code that was generated with um, the, the CLI, React Native, in it. So there's a couple of pieces here. This is just JavaScript, but this is an index file. This is basically what they give you to kick off your app. A couple of things you'll notice. Um, this is uh, different than JavaScript. And one of the things that we can look at here is JavaScript environment. And you can actually go down and look at JavaScript transform. So it's different than ES5 that you might be used to in the browser or if you're writing ES6 now. Um, and there's a bunch of features uh, and transforms that turn this into um, ES5 JavaScript uh, or whatever features that V8 is going to run under the hood or Apple's um, JavaScript core. Uh, but the features that you can use in ES5, um, there's a couple of reserved words like promise and catch. Uh, you can use all of these ES6 features. I'm not going to go through them all, but uh, things like computer properties, destructuring, classes. You can also use ES7 features like object spread and have a trailing comma. Um, in your function definitions. So we can kind of see here, there's a trailing comma there. Uh, if I scroll down just a little bit, you can see that I've got the fat rocket from ES6. Um, so let's just look at a little bit of what this um, basic vanilla app is doing. Uh, so if you haven't used React, I'm not going to cover sort of the fundamentals. Uh, there's probably a ton of other materials that'll do that. Really, I just want to highlight the development workflow for React Native. Uh, but we've got uh, the thing that's kicking us off is React.create class. The other thing you'll notice is that in line here, I have sort of this XML sort of style markup almost. And this is something called JSX. And it basically is a... a uh, a subset or a superset of JavaScript that allows you to use this markup in here. Um, and when it's compiled, uh, it'll get turned into just pure JavaScript. But the React Packager that's sitting in the background here, um, it's doing all those transforms on demand. So if I minimize this guy and I pull this over here and make a change, for example, if I change, uh, let's go back to the simulator and see, if I change Welcome to React Native to Welcome to Hearthstone Browser. And I hit Save. You'll see that uh, all those transforms ran again here. It took 43 milliseconds. And now I'd ha I don't see that change in the iOS simulator. And one of the things that I've 
learned is that if I'm making changes um, in iOS, usually the workflow is that I have to restart by going to Xcode and hitting stop and then play to see that kind of stuff happen. But I don't have to do that here. I can use, as you can see in the instructions, I can use command R's from my web development workflow. So I can hit command R and that actually reloads. Uh, and you can see that um, the bridge that's communicating via WebSockets actually initiated a request for that bundle file. There's a JavaScript bundle getting created under the hood. And so I can use my web development workflow to work with React Native. So I, again, I can change something, uh, deck browser, command R, boom. And one of the things on the React site is that uh, they're aiming for sub second optimization for being able to hit command R and see your changes reflected. And from the initial playing that I've been able to do, it's been very responsive and, and uh, been able to uh, do that really easily and fast. Uh, the other really cool thing is normally uh, you'd be sort of stuck using Xcode to debug, but because this is all JavaScript um, and being sort of interpreted, as I mentioned before, it's gonna be in JavaScript core on iOS and the simulator, but if we wanna debug, we can actually chuck a debugger in here. I'm gonna save that. You'll see the watch task picked that up, did the, the packager. And now if I hit Command R, uh, it's still working, but if I wanna actually debug, I, hit, I can hit Command D and I get a Chrome window open with a debugger attached. And so I can pop open my debugger with command uh, command option J and look at the sources. And I, I haven't actually hit my breakpoint yet. So let's make this font just a little bit smaller. But you can see that I've got this bundle here. And this is actually the entire compiled source of my app that I've got. And if you look here, uh, there's my debugger. And if I go back to the simulator and hit command R, now I'll be in the debugger. So I can bring that over to the side here and get my simulator back on the right. So nothing's rendered yet. I actually chucked the debugger right into the, the render routine. Let me close that. Uh, so I can look at the call stack and kind of poke around and see what's going on and jump through the sources and look at all of the internal React stuff. That's kind of cool. Um, but this is really cool that I'm actually running in the iOS simulator and I can debug my code um, here in Chrome DevTools. So the other thing you'll notice is um, this code here, the, the JSX code, got translated to um, all of these React.create element calls. And this is how React, uh, this is how that um, transform works with JSX. It'll just com compile it down to JavaScript that can be executed. Um, and React has this um, DSL and a bunch of objects that you can use. And it has a dependency resolution system that it's using behind the scenes to sort of resolve modules. Um, we'll take a look at that when we start adding the Hearthstone stuff. But I can step over this and I can go back to my simulator and I can hit play. And there we go, I got my rendered output. So that web development workflow, and I get if I hit Command R, it's gonna get back into that debugger, um, is really, really powerful. And I can get a super fast feedback loop uh, by doing that. So one of the other things that I thought was cool was this enables me to build apps for iOS, um, but I can actually pull in dependencies from other projects. So let's pull in um, underscore or Lodash. So let's do that. We're just gonna require Lodash. Uh, so in order to do that, if I was writing a JavaScript project, I would come over to my terminal, I'm gonna leave that packager running. Come back here, npm install lodash, save, and pull that in. And now if I cap my package JSON, you'll see that that's a dependency there as lodash. Um, and now I can use that code within here. And I'm actually going to use that a little bit later. Uh, so one of the pieces that I wanted to pull in from um, the, the other app was the actual card metadata because we're gonna use that to build a basic list view to render the cards. Uh, so let's go grab that uh, and we open up cards.js and you can see here, this is all the metadata for all of those cards. Um, and I've got uh, IDs um, and a bunch of other information like uh, which hero it applies to and the quality. And then an image URL because I actually have all of the images extracted. If we look in app image, um, cards, you can see I've got all of the images for each of those Hearthstone cards. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to pull this metadata in. So let me do that. So let's go over here and we'll make a new folder called data. And let's quick create a file in data called cards.js. And we're going to paste that in here, that metadata. 
and that's going to allow us to pull things in. Um, so let's require the cards in here. And we can just use a path like this. And let's just chuck our debugger in here and go back to Xcode, or sorry, the simulator rather. And Command R. And we've got our debugger. Let's see if it actually pulled the cards in. Uh, what do we have here? So if I pull up my console, make this larger, do I have cards? I do. And inside of that um, metadata piece, you can see that I'm using the common JS module system, which is um, a bit confusing in the context of iOS and modules because React has some extensions and it's monkey patching require under the hood to do some things like statically analyze whether you're requiring a static image versus a dynamic image, which we'll take a look at in a sec. But at least for now, um, that's how I can pull that metadata in. And I can see that cards.cards and zero, and I can look at that. So that's the warrior card there, and that's the image. That's cool. So let's see how we can um, render that. All right. I'm going to go get rid of my debugger here. Um, just wanted to show you that so you can see that you can use the common JS module style system uh, to pull in things. Um, you can also pull in dependencies that you can load via NPM in this context. Um, and the React Packager, I think under the hood, will actually just pull all this stuff in and build that bundle for you, um, resolving all the dependencies and everything for you. Let's get rid of this debugger. So we don't want the, the sort of hello world here. Let's, uh, I need to hit play in my debugger to continue, and then I need to come back here. And there we go. OK, so let's change up this view. So instead of rendering, um, render is a function that you can call on a React class. Uh, and it will be called after a couple of lifecycle events. But if you have done any React development, you know that there's something called um, state that a React class or a React view is bound to. There's also props. And props are things like uh, this piece here, this style property. And state is like internal data that we're going to store on the React class. So for the purposes of our Hearthstone deck browser and the list view that we're going to build, we want to track the cards as part of the state. And one of the functions in the React lifecycle that you can create and bind to is get initial state. Uh, and this will be executed before render. Um, and so we can return the initial state. So what we want, we want a data source, and some of this is React specific, um, and we're going to pull in a new component here. So we've got view, we've got text, we've got style sheet, we've got app registry. And if we go look at the React docs, we can see a bunch more. There's web view, there's view. Let's look at the view documentation really quickly. So a view is just a container that supports a layout. And one of the interesting things is if you've done any design for iOS, you're probably familiar with Interface Builder which is the thing that you use in Xcode to do layout. And I haven't done a ton of it, but from what I understand from research is that it's a constraints-based layout system. And um, if we take a look here, get back to launch screen. I think this is the interface builder here. So you can kind of see it here. And I, I haven't done any layout, but it's a graphical tool that does code generation for you. And all of the friends that I have that have done iOS development have said, um, once you generate things enough with this tool and see the code that it generates, you're usually better off to just write the code yourself and not worry about that. The nice thing about React Native and the view component is you can style it with Flexbox. Um, and Flexbox is a newer, um, CS, a newer way in CSS to style things. So one of the interesting things about styling is if we go to Flexbox, uh, sorry, style rather, you can see that it's not a full set um, of the CSS properties that you can use, but you can get by with a pretty decent number of properties using Flexbox and styles. And if you read these docs, they can kind of walk you through it. And if you look at the supported properties for view, for example, we can see that we can use Flexbox and then any of these CSS properties to style. So that's really cool, especially as a web developer, because I don't have to learn Interface Builder in iOS. I can just come in here and define styles for this thing. You can see down here they've created a style sheet uh, by importing a style sheet object. And then they're creating it as a JavaScript object literal with key value pairs, um, just like you would in CSS, uh, except you don't have to write CSS, you have to write it in JavaScript. And there's some design decisions and reasons for that uh, that you can read about in the docs. 
So for now, what we're going to do is we want a data source for our list view. We also need to import list view. So if we come over here to the docs, we can look at list view. So our core component designed for efficient display of vertically scrolling lists with changing data. We're going to do two ways to implement this. One is dynamically loading the images from um, a remote URL. So for example, if you're loading from a web server, and then we're going to show how to uh, load them statically. And this should give us enough context for um, at least getting kick started with React Native. So I'm going to pull in that list view, and I'm going to follow the convention here and have the trailing comma. And so my data source, uh, I'm going to say I want a new list view dot data source. And this is a, just a, an object that exists um, in the React Native API. I don't need that trailing semicolon. And so I want uh, the other thing you need to define, and this is sort of just something that's generated by default, is a comparator function for to determine if a row is changed. And this is just used internally. So we're going to do that row one, row two, use the fat rocket to make a, a lambda kind of expression. Uh, so we want to determine if row one is not equal to row two, and that, that is the row changed function. So this is our initial state. Um, we're just creating an empty data source with this comparator function. So we're going to pipe that card metadata that we pulled in here, which you can see over here. We're going to pipe that into um, this list view. And the place that we're going to do that is in another lifecycle function for React components, component did mount. Um, and from my understanding, this executes again before render happens. Um, so you're allowed to uh, do things uh, to the state that will manipulate it in a way that uh, will set the state up so that everything is ready. Um, you know, if you're doing pre-processing, or in our case, we want to set the data source um, so that our render function can render a list view. So let's do that. Uh, we can say this dot set state, which is a function, and we can pass it an object literal, and we're going to say data source um, this dot state dot data source, which we assigned up here because this object literal here is going to be bound to the this context for our React class. So let's grab that data source. Um, we're going to call clone with rows, which is uh, a method that you can pass in. And we're going to pass it the list of cards, um, cards.cards. So that will get the, the data source um, with its cards. So if we come down here and we put a debugger in, let's see if this all works, if we actually have a data source with rows. I'm going to reload this. Oh, and the other really cool feature of React Native is when you have an error in your code, the transformer that's running under the hood. So over here, you can see there was some trans, uh, transform errors with unexpected tokens and syntax errors. The really, really cool thing and the thing that just kind of floored me right away is I can see this error here and I can click on that and I can take me right back to the line where that happened in my editor. Um, that's really, really cool, being able to click in the iOS simulator and go to an IDE that's not Xcode to find the source of this. So I've got a trailing semicolon there. That's the problem. All right. So now let's see here. It looks like things are OK there. So if I go back to the simulator, now we're in our debugger. So let's take a look at this, this.state. And we have a data source, which is our list view data source. Uh, dot data source. Let's poke around at that just a little bit. So it looks like I can't really tell if I've actually got values in here. Um, so let's go a little bit further and try and render this in the context of a list view and see if I've done something else wrong. So I've got get initial state for setting up my data source uh, with that comparator function. This is just something that I pulled from the, the tutorial. If you walk through the React Native tutorial, you'll see that stuff in it explains it a little bit better. Uh, we're going to set the state when the component mounts um, to cards.cards. I believe that's right. Yeah, because there's a property in this object literal called cards, which is the entire map of cards. Uh, we're going to create render. And we're going to do a couple things. We're going to first uh, change this from a view to a list view. And we want a couple of properties on our list view. So let's just have this in data source equals this dot state dot data source. And in JSX, there's a little bit of confusion around double curlies versus single curlies. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what the difference is, but I know that uh, in this case, I want single curlies. Uh, a list view has a custom function called render row. 
let's do that and let's say we're going to create a function called render card um, and we're going to set some styles up styles.list view so let's get rid of that old view so that's our list view and if we reload now oh, i think you hit play over here and now looks like we've got a syntax error. Let's pop open the simulator. You can see it's actually repeating um, because it's trying to <laughs> do this for every item that's in the list. And I believe that there's like 577 cards in this metadata. So that's not a big deal. Um, I can do that. I think it's just because we haven't actually implemented the render card method. So let's do that. Um, it's gonna exist over here. Render card. And render card is going to take as an argument a card. Um, the convention is that the list view will pass the the instance of the thing that it's iterating over here. And inside of render card, we want to go back to our view, just our plain old view. Uh, let's do style. Actually, let's leave out the style for now. Uh, let's close that view. So inside of our card view, if you remember from the Hearthstone deck builder, we want to pull open this card. Um, and then right now, these are just images, but I want to show some some of the metadata, like maybe the cost, the mana cost of the card. I, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to build this mobile UI um, for this thing. This is really, really early. And the purpose of this screencast is just to show you some of the development features. Um, but I am going to try and take this Hearthstone deck builder and, and build it in React Native. Uh, just to sort of further my understanding of the platform and see what happens. Um, so we want a view, we want an image, um, and we need a source. And if you look in cards.js, we've got an image URL. So let's try and use that so we can say card.image URL. And then uh, we want a style. I'm going to leave style off for now. And there's my image. Um, and then I've got another view, like a sub view in here. And I want a text node, and we're going to put in um, card.name, card.name, and the single curlies, and close that off. And let's pop in a couple other things, like what hero it's for, and we can put a static piece out there. So card.hero, you can kind of see here what, where I'm pulling from, card.hero. And I think I was going to pull card.mana. So let's do that. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, card.description, let's do that. And we'll put the word mana here. So now I've got render card. Let's come back over here. And reload. And it looks like get invalid global user. Got some kind of error here. That's okay though. We'll figure it out. Maybe I need to define styles. I haven't actually defined my styles. Let's let's add our styles node. I'm gonna actually restart this and see what's going on. It starts up pretty quick. You are trying to render the global image variable as a React element. You probably forgot to require a name. Oh, let's see. Yes, I did forget. That's an actually pretty helpful error message. So let's pull image in, which is a list of one of those components that you can see over here, image. A React component for displaying different types of images, including network images, static resources, temporary local images, and images from local disks, such as the camera roll. Um, this is here how you would require an image statically, uh, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. And this, which we're going to use first, is how we would require an image um, dynamically, basically from a, a URL. And if we look in here, we can see that my URL right now is uh, protocol. There's no protocol on it, so no HTTP, and there's no server. 
Uh, and so one of the things that you'll find is your first exploration into loading images in React, uh, like I did, will probably lead you to do something like this. Um, so I'm going to actually go and hard code a reference uh, to this. So I'm going to change slash image slash cards in cards.js to let me pull that slash image slash cards slash so that's 50, 551 so now i've got just a, a reference so that i can pretend like this data is coming from an api server but um it's not really I, i'm gonna start up a server to just serve this stuff statically uh, slash image slash cards so now i need to pull in the card images from my other project so i think that was in app image and cards. So uh, let's copy minus our cards to code HS browser. Um, slash image slash cards. Let's see if we got that slash image. Yep, looks like it. Uh, looks like I don't have that subdirectory so let's change this to slash image there you go and so now i'm going to just start a static web server in here and i like to use um uh, serve which is a another npm module by tj holy uh it's just really really simple so you can npm install serve um, I, I do it globally because then I can just statically start up a web server anywhere. You might have something else that you like to use. So I can use serve. So now it's serving this directory on port 3000. So if I go to my metadata and copy this URL and open that up, there we go. Okay, cool. So now I'm basically simulating the API uh, so that React Native can request an image at this URI. So let's see if that works now and it stops complaining about things. A valid React component must be returned. So maybe I'm missing a return. I am indeed missing a return. You can see here that my render has a return. So let's wrap this guy in a return. And just indent those lines. And is there anything else? So I've got the list view. I've got render. I've got render card. Reload. Did we get any errors? One other thing you can do is pop open Xcode and look at the log here because all of the React components that are in libraries, you can see there's a bunch of Xcode projects that um, the React people have put in place with all of the bridge stuff and all the communication. You can look in here and see sometimes there's information. Uh, I think maybe I just don't have the right styling information. That's what I'm missing. So let's add some styling information here. So I'm going to change up this guy, uh, flex is container one. I'm going to change um, the flex direction to row. Uh, line items center is fine. Let's change the background color to black. You can use any CSS properties. Um, let's add uh, styling for our text node so that we can do that. Uh, so let's come in here. Style equals styles dot text, and we'll give it a color of white so that we can actually read things. Uh, let's get rid of welcome and instructions because we don't need those. Let's create a list view style, and we'll say that the list view padding top is 20. Um, background color is this weird, I don't even know what this is. I think it's gray, whatever came with the, the, the default. Uh, let's do another one for thumbnail, which we're going to show that image. So width is 53, height is 81, and yeah. So now let's see what that looks like. Uh, so now we need to actually assign those. Um, so let's go style equals styles dot list view. I'm just going to reuse this style all over the place there too um, 
text style equals text view style style list view. Actually, we wanted card metadata as this style. So let's add that card metadata. And I'm trying to remember what I actually had here looking at my cheat sheet. I think I just put flex as one. Let's see if that gets us something different. Right, syntax error attempted to redefine style property style. See if oh, it didn't say anything in there. Where did I do this? Oh, I have it in here twice. I already had it in there before. Hey, there we go. Um, so we can see we've got some metadata, but we don't have our image. So why is that image source? Ah, right. Um, an image element by default has no dimensions, and it's not like in the browser where it seems to just look at the image that comes back from the request and then automatically style it um, with the sort of default dimensions. So we need to add style styles dot. Uh, I think I called it thumbnail. Yeah. Let's see if that gives us. There we go. So now we have a list view uh, with all of this stuff, and these are native components that are being rendered. The cool thing is, um, this is a lazy loading list view. So one of the interesting things about React uh, and components is if you look into React for rendering on the browser, it's got this algorithm under the hood called the virtual DOM, which allows it to do diffs of operations that are doing updates um, because one of the slowest points in the browser is rendering and doing DOM interaction. The DOM is inherently slow. And so React gives you a virtual DOM where it computes the diffs between the changes that are happening in the layout engine uh, and then comes up with a more efficient set of uh, operations to execute. The cool thing about the most of the components here is you can see that um, in my little static, static server, I got a bunch of initial requests um, for those images, but I didn't get all of them, all 551. And so if I scroll through here now, it's got pretty decent scrolling performance. As I start to get to the bottom of the list, I'm just gonna, you'll see some requests start to come in. There we go. So requests for those images, um, but there's no pop in or anything. It's actually really, really fast. I mean, that's probably just because I'm running on localhost here, um, but you can see that uh, that's that's pretty cool. Um, so if you're building a list view and it's actually remote loading all this stuff, your performance should be theoretically pretty decent. I mean, it's not a great user experience right now to have to scroll through this entire list of cards um, because I can't do any of my filtering operations that I had in the other thing. But performance seems to be pretty, pretty good um, just from running locally. I have no idea when you introduce network latency over like a mobile connection, what that would be like. And I definitely wouldn't recommend loading this many large images over a mobile connection. Um, one thing I'm investigating is maybe there's a more efficient way to um, to store these. And one of those would be to include the images statically uh, in the application instead of trying to load these dynamically at runtime. So let's take a look at that and see how we could do that. And one of the sources of confusion about this is if I go to uh, React Native Static. Yeah, I was looking at these docs the other day. Um, so we can see here in the course of a project, it's not uncommon to add and remove many images and accidentally end up shipping images you're no longer using. In order to fight this, we need to find a way to know statically which images are being used in the app. And to do that, we introduced a marker on require. So this is one of those like extensions to require that is not built into um, CommonJS, but it's something that within the React Native ecosystem that you can use. And so what they're showing here is if you want to include a static image, one that you're bundling right in Xcode, for example, in images.xcassets, right now there's just my app icon, which is basically blank. But if I want to bundle assets that are included in there, I need to actually include this string prefixed with image bang and then the name of the actual image. And one of the interesting pieces about this is you cannot dynamically compute this. The reason being is because they do some static analysis on this code 
to reference which images you actually need for your application. So in order to get past having to dynamically load these from um, our URL here, we're going to change it up a little bit. And I'm only going to do two images because I haven't figured out a good pattern for statically loading like 551 images and what the size of the iOS application would be and, and sort of what the trade-offs are there. But I can load a couple of images um, statically just so you can kind of see how it works. So the first thing we can do is we can go into component did mount and let's just create two cards for our list view. Let's, uh, I think the first two in there, if we look at the simulator garage and mind control, for example. So if we go and we say, let's grab garage and he is, we're going to look in the cards dot cards using Lodash's find where, uh, I think he's ID seven. Yep. So let's grab that. And let's grab mind control, uh, mind control, same kind of thing. We'll just index in just so we can see how to statically load images. Uh, and let's look for mind control. Oh, he's ID eight. Uh, there we go. So now we have the card instances. Um, so instead of cloning with rows, the entire uh, data set of cards, we could just create a new array with just garage and mind control. So let's see if that works. Oh, and I've got a bad thing here again. Force of habit. Again, really nice feedback loop there. So now I can reload. So now I just have two things in my list. They're still being loaded um, from my API server. So if I kill this and start it again, uh, or my static server rather, not my API server, and reload Command R, I can see that uh, those images were actually um, probably cached already so they didn't it didn't have to reinitiate the request but if i kill this and then restart it now we should see those requests that's interesting it's still cached i wonder if um, xcode is actually just caching those uh, no matter so let's um, not load those dynamically via uri let's try and load those um, statically and so the first attempt that i actually had to do this was I went in here and I changed these paths. Uh, so if we revert what we did here, and I got rid of them uh, in cards.js. Oh, I don't have cards, just image. So now I just have the file name where your garage hell screen.png. And I had tried to like compute it. So I had tried to say uh, image URL equals card dot image URL dot split on dot uh, to get rid of that. So I'm going to split right, right here to get rid of that PNG. And then I'm going to take the first half of it. So that part. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. I can do this. And then I can just say, uh, instead of that, I can just say URI is image URL. So let's see what happens here. And now I have no images and I was very confused as to why. And I looked down here uh, at the log that was coming from RCT static image manager dot M, which is a Objective-C component that looks like it's used to resolve image dependencies between um, the React Packager and Xcode, an error setting property image tag of RCT static image with tag 19. So you can't um, dynamically compute uh, these things. Uh, if you're going to do this, you actually need to hard code the string, um, which you can see here. So it's saying bad. You can't do a dynamic lookup like this. You have to hard code this because the Packager analyzes any of these flags with image bang and tries to resolve them in um, the Xcode image assets. So let's do the steps necessary to get that to work. So let's get rid of this. Um, so we're going to uh, grab the images. So let's say Garrosh's image is um, require image bang Garrosh. Uh, what was that path? Let's grab it from here like that. And the mind control image similarly 
and they're both they're all PNGs. And I've read a little bit on the GitHub forums um, for React Native that if you're using anything other than a PNG, you might have problems with things like JPEGs at the moment. Um, you'll notice I'm leaving off the extension. So that's part one. I need to be able to uh, to require those. But then the next step is any of the assets that are going to be included statically in my iPhone app. I need to go into Xcode into images XC assets. I'm going to come in here and right click and say import. And I'm going to go look an image and I'm going to search for garage. And yeah, let's grab that. And then let's pull in the other one with import. And I'm probably doing this wrong. Again, I don't have um, much knowledge of uh, how to set things up properly as, as far as asset management in Xcode. This is just the result of me experimenting and trying to give you an example so that if you run into this, uh, you won't get blocked. So let's stop that. Um, the next piece we need to do, so those are the statically included images. And I'm actually going to assign those properties because um, now that I've required them, at least I have a reference to them in memory here. Uh, and the, the packager should hopefully pick them up. So let's um, let's say Garrosh dot image equals Garrosh image and mind control dot image equals mind control image. So now I've mutated these two um, entries, these two pieces of metadata, and I've passed uh, a reference to the image here. Um, because I'm requiring them statically with this marker, the packager is going to pull them in and it's going to actually create an object which we can take a look at here. So if we debugger and start this guy up again, can't find variable image URL. Oh, right. Uh, but I didn't even care about that for now. I just kind of care about, oh yeah, one thing, uh, if you go back to the debugger UI and you try to command R, um, it has this helpful thing that says you shouldn't reload, uh, you'll break the debugging session. So I'm gonna not reload. You should command R in the iOS simulator to reload. So let's do that. Uh, it looks like it's not even getting to that uh, debugger and componented mount. So let's come down here. Did I have another syntax error? Let's check the packager. Looks like those transforms are working okay. Um, well, let's change this up anyway. Card.image. So that transform should have happened. And now if I reload this, okay, cool. So I got my image, but I didn't get my debugger, which I was hoping to hit. Debugger. Maybe my session is outdated because I killed the, the process. So maybe this thing is actually not even attached anymore. So let me close that. Yeah, I don't care about that. And I'm going to come back here and hit Command D. And that'll open it up again. And we can see debugger session whatever is active. Come back to the simulator. Command R. There we go. Now I'm in my debugger. Uh, so I can take a look at what that actually did. Um, so I can see that the Garrosh image... Um, it's not like a binary thing or anything. It's it's an internal representation of what comes back from React's require with that marker, the image marker. Um, and it's got a couple of properties. Is static true? So I haven't dug into this much, but I guess React is treating uh, this object differently. And then it's got a URI property, which basically just maps to the name of the file um, for that image that we stuck into the assets. And if we look in here, um, we can kind of see that. We can see here... Um, Warrior, Garrosh, Hellscream, and Priest Mind Control. And if you look in uh, your terminal, so let me come over here, and I think it's in iOS, uh, images.xe assets, priest mind control .image set. So it's actually creating a folder. Um, and then if I look at the JSON, you can see there's some metadata. So maybe I could actually create an image set with like all of those images that I want to be statically loaded. The only trick that I'm sort of wondering is how would I then um, programmatically do this because I need those static strings to be in here for the packager to pick them up. Um, so it's just a question of like, do I just basically generate myself a file that preloads all the images and then I can just do lookups like this for every card? I don't know. Um, it's something I'm going to experiment with a little bit later. Uh, but you can see now, uh, at least I don't even need my um, static server running, right? Because all of the pieces that are uh, required, uh, let me get back to that debugger session. And oh, yeah, I need to get rid of that debugger. Where's that right there? So let's do that.
Come back here, hit play. iOS simulator reload. There we go. Um, so I don't need that thing running. I can actually, this is enough of it that I can preload those images. Um, and so that's about as far as I wanted to take uh, you in React Native, or at least the introduction to React Native. Uh, things, again, that I want to recap that are really, really cool, being able to use web development tools like Chrome DevTools, especially if you're savvy with Chrome DevTools, uh, being able to debugger um, the fast feedback loop of command R from the simulator and command D to get into the debugger session. Um, the other really interesting thing is there, if you look here, localhost 8081, the last thing I can show you, there's actually a debug URL, so I can hit that, and I can look at the dependency graph, and I can see all of the pieces that are added um, in the file watcher update. So it looks like it's added a whole bunch of paths to that. This is actually interesting. I didn't see that before. But if we scroll way, way down a little bit further, there we go, graph dump. Uh, I can see all of the dependencies, and this is useful for if you're trying, as I did initially, to try and require um, these cards unsuccessfully. Uh, you can see here, if I look for slash cards.js, there it is in the dependency graph. So if it's not finding something, this debug URL uh, with the graph is pretty nice for being able to just verify that the dependencies are loaded as the React pack Packager sees them. If we come back here and look at cached packages, you can see all of the pieces that have been cached um, internally by the, I guess, the packager. I don't know how this relates to Xcode, but the the only thing I wanted to show you there is mainly the dependency graph. And you can see, uh, looks like, oh, these are just events for the file watcher. But if we jump down to, yeah, that, that graph dump is pretty useful for mapping out the dependencies. Um, again, really, really nice from a developer standpoint. It seems like they've done a really good job with uh, optimizing for productivity. And I'm excited to explore this a little bit further and see what can happen. Uh, if you want the code for this, I'm going to be putting it up on GitHub. It's not up yet, but I'll make sure that by the time this video is up, I have a link for you so you can kind of explore what I've been working on. And thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative. If you'd like to see more React Native videos, uh, I'm probably going to follow up with another one to show sort of things that I learned about building the UI, trying to get all of these features like filtering by class and things like that uh, into this and what that implications are for mobile design with the components that come with React Native, because um, I haven't even dug into all of these components. And this is sort of my first foray into iOS development and the workflow, because I know JavaScript and I know Node and I know the ecosystem there seems to give me such a faster feedback loop that it's super exciting that I can actually consider building my very first iPhone application uh, with this development methodology. So. Uh, yeah, all that to say, thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe, send it to your friends, follow me on Twitter, I'm Dmosier, uh, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.